So how do you distinguish between sharing that you're kind of having a hard time or something like that? And you do kind of write it a little bit in the book, but when you do acknowledge to the people around you that you're having a difficult moment because of the pain, so to speak, is that different for you? Can can you share a little bit about the struggle without kind of burdening them? Or is it kind of more one way or the other for you? And does that question make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, I think that, um, I think, People learn to uh, to see it. Um, so yeah. people that I'm close with can tell <laughs> when I'm having a bad day, <laughs> and uh, and yeah. they just give me space so I can go and do whatever I need to do uh, to sort of take care of it as best I can. Uh, so whether that's going, right. it's usually going to uh, a bedroom and turning the lights out and uh, putting my self-hypnosis recording on. So I have recordings for sleep, for pain, for uh, all sorts of stuff. And um, and that sort of helps me to drop into that meditative state. And uh, well, I doodle, I, I spend a fair bit of time in trance. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe... I guess your process of dealing with it. So you, you did the detox thing um, and then you kind of had to find some way to f- and deal with all this. So can you sort of start, tell us a bit like how that all evolved? Um, well, the, I think that uh, <laughs> complicating <laughs> factors um, is that um, in 2014, I had low back issues. So I was diagnosed with uh, uh, spinal stenosis. And, um, so that became daily pain added to my headaches. Um, so it was like, uh, what the fuck is going on now? And, uh, I had to figure out how to sort of manage that. So I went to physio, um, did physio exercises every day. I started doing yoga every morning, at least for 15 or 20 minutes. And that was a little helpful, but once again, it didn't take the pain away completely but I stayed away from any narcotics. Uh, so um, I was taking, you know, extra strength Tylenol and Advil. One of the things they told me when I left the CAMH medical withdrawal unit was um, to combine Advil and, and Tylenol at the same time because they act on different centers in the brain. So you can get added relief when you take them both together. Right. So. And then my pain specialist said, no, stay away from Advil and Aleve because uh, they, they said that in later life that can cause stroke. And <laughs> there's always something that can cause, right? Uh, anyway, but I ended up right. taking, uh, you know, uh, a dozen t- extra strength Tylenol a day. Uh, and people would say, well, if it's not doing the job, why take it? Well, because it drops the pain by a notch and, and a notch is significant, right? A difference of a notch can help me to conduct a session uh, being fully present um, rather than having to be pulled away from by the pain. I want to read one other thing here. When I spend time in bed trying to control the pain now, I am flooded with thoughts of all the things I should be doing as a partner, as a father and grandfather. But I have learned to accept these experiences and then shift away from them to the job of reducing the pain so I can be more involved as much as possible. Then the thought appears again. I could live another 20 years like this. Fuck me. <laughs> and then and then over on the next page, I guess you talk about how, so here's, the bad habits are always more effective because the intention to get immediate relief is more powerful than the intention to reduce self-harm behaviors. However, in the long run, creating more positive habits is a healthier mm-hmm. solution. So I think not only for chronic pain, but certainly it must be so much more difficult, quite frankly. Can you talk about, and I assume, well, I know from listening to you and learning from you that so much of people's transformation or change or healing comes from acknowledging, you know, how could I live another 20 years like this? Fuck me to, to the trans transmission or the change or the transformation of that into acceptance, Mm -hmm. I guess. And can you just talk about how you work with acceptance and what that's like? I think that, um, 
I mean, accepting the reality of the situation, I think, is always important. Um, and I think that's one of the, the sort of foundational things of, of the ACT uh, modality, uh, is accepting that these things happen and these things come. Uh, and then uh, the question then is, you have to decide on what you do about it. And uh, for me, um, the fact that I can accept that, that I have this pain and that I have uh, even more pain now, daily, um, one of the things I came to realize that was that if I make sure that at some point every day I find some joy, even if it's only a few minutes, that I can look back on and say, that I like that, that was really good, that was important, I don't want to lose that. Um, and I'd like to try and build that more. Um, so, so that becomes my focus, that, that I accept that the pain is there, I do what I can to alleviate it, but try and shift mm -hmm. and focus on, on the joy in life and the value in life. When I walk, uh, when I go for a walk, uh, I often have the thought, um, you know, this, this could be the last time I ever get to do this. Right? We don't know when our time is going to come. Uh, we also don't know where we're going, but uh, <laughs> if anywhere, uh, that's another topic. Um, but saying, you know, like yeah. it, this could be the last time, which means I want to make sure I get the most out of this. I want to see everything I see. I want to smell everything, all the senses, you know. Um, and that mm -hmm. keeps me very focused on being mindful of the moment. And when I do that, because we are only able to focus on one thing at a time, right? I mean, we're good at multitasking, but we actually can only focus on one yeah. thing at a time. Yeah. So if I'm focused on the five senses of what I'm experiencing, then the pain uh, right away shifts to the background a little bit. Yeah, and I sort of yeah. recognize that, and I wanna and I wanna try and build on that. I'd love to be able to shift it away completely, but I can't do that. <laughs> right, and I still cry sometimes, but uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I want to read another piece from in similar context. So you say, I am increasingly encouraged about the power of our minds to change sensations throughout our bodies, temperature, tension, pain, heart rate, blood pressure, and emotions. After establishing a foundation of daily practice of diaphragmatic breathing, control has never meant stopping emotions, negative or positive. Perhaps we should shift away from the term negative and positive and instead talk about difficult and enjoyable. Emotions often rise and recede like the ocean tide, and all emotions need to be accepted and experienced fully. It is important to work through the difficult emotions and fully embrace the enjoyable ones without trying to hold on to them. As we all know, they too pass. Chronic pain also rises and recedes even though the pain may never go away completely. To establish control over painful emotions, I must recognize when they are rising, understand and accept them without judgment, spend time with them so they settle, then shift my focus to other more pleasant endeavors. And I guess that's what you just kind of described there. I, can you talk a bit about, I see this when working with people, when things do start to change and they have good moments and life gets good for them, they have to relearn that not attaching to that is important too <laughs> and not getting carried away in the good and thinking that's how it's supposed to be either and so you just you you point that out here so nicely and, yeah. and so maybe you can expand on that or maybe you already you did want, you want to i mean it's it's a natural thing to want to hold on to happiness and joy realizing that we can't hold on to it for good it'll last as long as it'll last you want to just enjoy it as fully as possible while it's there uh, and not try and hold on to it. Because I think what happens when we do that is we get into a pattern, like everything else, we get into a pattern of um, being upset that we don't have that anymore. Right? Uh, I had all that. Mm. That was so mm. good. I wanted to hold it. And I couldn't. Shit, I fuck. And, you know, and that's not helpful. <laughs> and, and it leads, it, it, it actually then I think develops into that. The, the way people start to just try and avoid happiness because they can't hold on to it. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Yeah. That thought comes, what's the point? I'm going to lose it anyway, right? 